Hello everyone, this is Mohamed Yakub. I'm back again with another STM32 tutorial and this time I'm going to share with you an STM library for the MPU 6050 IMU module. And this module features 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis gyroscope. This is in fact one of the most common IMU modules used in Arduinos and many other uh, microcontrollers. Um, so I thought it would be a good, good one to share a library for it on the STM. So if you're someone who want to use an accelerometer or gyro in your project, this video is for you. And what I have is that I've got a library for it that is written by my colleague as part of his STM uh, training. Um, so just a quick walk through the library. This is a very basic library. It implements reading raw data of accelerometer um, and raw data of gyroscope, as well as scaled and calibrated data. So. I think that's enough introduction. Let's get started and open Cubamix and set up a project for it. And today I'll be using the Nucleo, um, Nucleo board instead of the Discovery, but it doesn't make a difference uh, for you. You can use any STM board with I2C. Um, so open Cubamix. Um, and I've got the updated Cubamix version, which I don't particularly like, but I updated it for um, reasons. So uh, click on access to board selector. Um, and ours would be the Nucleo, so it's a Nucleo of 401RE, this one. Alright, and the uh, first things we'll do here is, um, I think I'll leave everything as default, but I'll disable the external clock because uh, the Nucleo doesn't come with an external oscillator, so I'll just disable all of them. And then, push button is enabled, LED is enabled, and UART is enabled, I'll leave them as they are, um, and I'll leave these two as they are too. Um, so, simply, what I need to do is I just need to um, enable I2C line and I want to use PP8 and PP9 because that's where the I2C um, is mapped out on the Arduino connector of the Nucleo. So, if you look at the Nucleo, if I did a very quick search on a Nucleo of 4RE pinout, you clearly see that... I'm sorry. So you clearly see that PB8 and PB9 are the one D14 and D15, and these are my I2C um, clock and data. So enable PB8 and set it to I2C1 clock, and PB9 I2C1 data. And then I just need to go to connectivity tab on the peripherals and I2C1 and enable it as an I2C, and this pin will turn green, right? Uh, and I'll leave all the setting as um, in its default state. And that's pretty much everything I need to do on Cubamix. So let me just double check on the clock configuration very quickly. Everything looks okay. Now I'm ready to generate the project. So select a location to store your project in. I want to store it in here. And I'll call it MPU 6050 tutorial. And um, select your IDE. Mine is um, Keel uh, 5. So Keel Microvision 5. Um, and just double check everything is okay and click on generate source code and while this is generating for any of my business contact you can get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com all right code is generated successfully click on open project and this will take you to keel microvision ide okay and uh, the first thing i'll do here is i'll just um, open my main and uh, let the code compile and what you need to do is that you need to copy the library H and C file that I'm going to include down in the description of the video. You need to copy them to your project source and include. So I'm going to copy the C file over to my MPU tutorial source folder. And I'll copy the H file into my include files. All right, so you should have them in the source and include the TJ MPU 6050 library. And now let's just wait for this one to finish compiling and then we're going to carry on with the um, video. All right, great. Finish compiling initially without any errors. Now I need to go to application user, right click and add existing files to the group. Um, and I'm going to go back one more step. And I know my library C file in the source code, so I want to add it. And I'm also going to navigate to the include folder and I want to let the header file to appear in here too, so that I can open it directly. So. Um, that's everything. So the um, now 
the library is added to my project, I still need to include it in the main. So as a first step, open the library H file and you will see that there is an STM of 4 include and this one, depending on your board, or on your board, so if it's an F1, then you need to change this one. If it's an F3 and so on. Um, but you will always see this defined in your main. So the uh, automatically generated Cubamex main would have the STM include if you go to the uh, main. Um, so the STM32 of 4 hull. So you copy this over to your library, to the library header file in here. But in our case, it's the same because using an F4 board. I hope that makes sense. So that's the first tip you want to check before you carry on with the uh, using the library. Um, okay, the second step is to open the library C file and copy the header to our main. So copy the library MPU6050 header to the main so that main can see it and use its uh, functions. And then uh, we are ready to use the library functions. Um, so the library basically we will acquire raw accelerometer data, scaled accelerometer data, so scaled with units in units of gravity and then a gyro raw data and gyro scale data, which are in degrees per second, I believe. Um, all right, so the first function we need to call is the, I2, is the MPU initialize to pass the I2C handle. So copy this to the main and we'll call it in begin number two after we're doing all the GPIO initializations. So first step is to initialize the MPU 6050 module and I2C interface. So this function takes a single parameter and it takes a pointer to the I2C handle. Uh, and we're using I2C1 for the communication and is defined by Cubamix and given the name I2C1. So I'll pass it here with the ampersand sign because it expects a pointer parameter. All right, so that's the first one. And the second function that we got to call is MPU config to configure the accelerometer and gyroscope parameters. So copy it to the main. So this is to configure the accelerometer and gyro parameter. Okay. Uh, and the parameter to this function, it takes an MPU config type diff. So it's a type diff of, let me just copy it. So this is a type diff defined here in the library. So it takes clock source, full scale of both a gyroscope and accelerometer, a digital low pass filter parameter and sleep mode bit. So I'll copy it in here. I first need to define it. So define it in beginning number one and I'll call it my MPU config. And this will act as a structure type div. So my config dot accelerometer full scale, then my config dot clock source, I'll just list all of them, then I'll set their parameters. And then the digital low pass filter, the um, gyro full scale, and the sleep mode bit. Okay, so for the first one, for the accelerometer full scale, there is an enum for it defined in the library header file, and that's the one. So for accelerometer full scale, this is to determine the range of the accelerometer measurement and hence the accuracy. So if you're measuring a small range of 2G, so plus or minus 2G, and G is unit of gravity, so 1G is equal to 9.81 meter per second square. Okay, and that's what it means. So if you increase the range by a lot, then you'll have um, lower accuracy. Okay, so I'll, I'll choose 4G and set it to the full scale of the accelerometer. And the second parameter is the clock source. So that's something to do with the clocking the MPU, but in most cases, you just need the internal eight megahertz. Okay, and the next parameter is the digital low pass filter. And there is also an enum for it. Um, so digital low pass filter defined for both gyro and accelerometer. So, so it's either 184 Hertz for accelerometer and 188 for gyro. So I'll use this one by default. Um, it's not a big deal, it's just for testing. And then depending on your application, whether you're measuring fast signal or slow signal, you can adjust the low pass filter accordingly. And then the gyro full scale, and that's um, 500 degrees per second, perhaps. That's what I'll use as my full scale. Um, um, and again, this depends on how quick your gyroscope is measuring. And then the sleep mode bit, I'll set this to zero, obviously, because uh, if you set it to one, then you're setting the device into sleep mode. 
and 0 is normal mode. Okay, and then I just need to pass the configuration as a pointer to the function so that configuration will take place. That's it. These are the two functions that you need to call at the beginning. Now we are ready to read our uh, measurement data. So first one is I'm going to read the accelerometer raw data using this function. So I'll call it in here. So this is raw data of both accelerometer and gyro. And I'll call their equivalent functions. So accelerometer raw data and gyro raw data. And then secondly, we'll do the scale data of both the gyro and accelerometer. Let me just list them out and I'll complete the function uh, parameters in a bit. So get accelerometer scale data and gyroscope scale data. All right. And now for the raw data, there is a type diff. It expects a raw data type diff. And that's defined here. So for raw data of either accelerometer or gyro, you use this type diff. And for scale data, which, is, which returns a floating point, you use this type diff. So let me show you how you use it. So copy the raw data diff to the main. And I'll define it in bigger number zero so that we can see it in a debugging mode. And I'll define two variables here, my Excel raw data and my gyro, because you both use the same type. Okay. And similarly for the scale data, I'll define two variables, my accelerometer scaled and my gyro scaled. Okay, so I'll copy the my accelerometer raw data and that will be a parameter to the get accelerometer raw data and it's a pointer, so I need to put the ampersand sign. And similarly for my gyro raw data, copy the gyro variable and then my scale data. Um, let me do the scale data as well on the go. So my accelerometer raw data, I need to pass a pointer to that variable. And finally, the gyro scaled um, data. Okay, um, and the way the library is implemented, uh, if you are acquiring a raw data of the, of the gyro, you have to call the accelerometer raw data first. This is just something to do with acquiring the, um, um, the registers. So if I go to the accelerometer and gyro get raw data, you'll see the following. So scroll down till you get to the um, get accelerometer raw data. There we go. It reads accelerometer raw. It checks the uh, ready status flag uh, for data ready. If it's ready, then it reads both accelerometer and gyro. And that's a very good practice because this, I only need to check for it once, not twice. And then it will store this into a temporary variable in the library. And then when you go get the gyro raw data, it just copy them over. So you need to call the, call the accelerometer function first and then followed by the gyro. And then similarly for the scale, you need to call both of them at the same time. So now let me just comment out the scale one because uh, I'm just going to do the raw data first. And I'll set a short delay of um, 10 milliseconds perhaps. Um, and I can also toggle my LED, just an indication that the sensor is working. And I know my LED is on port A and pin 5. All right, so now we're ready. Let's compile the code and make sure there are no errors. And then we're going to load it to the board. And wiring are very, very simple. And as you say, as you saw in Cubemix, we have PP8 and PP... We have PP8 and PP9 for the I2C. All you need to do with the module is that you need to connect the uh, VCC to three volt and ground to ground, and then clock to clock and data to um, data. We're not using any of the other pins for this uh, demo. Okay, finish compiling without any errors. Now let's plug in the board and load the board and load the code to our nuclear board. And now let's get into debugging mode and read the raw data. Okay, and on debugging mode, I first gonna add my raw data variable to watch memory. So right click and add to watch one. And I'll expand this so that I can see all the variables. Um, and I will disable the hex display so that I can see uh, them straight and decimal. And let's run the code. And there we go, perfect. So now if I leave my accelerometer lining to the, towards the ground, I'll see that the largest value is on the Z axis. And if I lean it towards the X axis downward, um, well, sorry, I think somewhere 
came out. Let me just restart it. All right, there we go. And then if I lean the x-axis towards the ground, um, the majority of the value go into the x and then the y-axis too. So, but this is not a scaled data, so this is not showing any units. And now for the gyro as well, if you rotate it towards a certain axis, you'll see a large value on that axis. So now this is the raw data. It doesn't represent a unit. Now let's stop this mode and go back and read the scale data that will show you values with units. Okay, so perfect. This is the raw data read. Now let me enable the scale data. And it's a good idea to disable the raw data because these are reading the raw data and the scaled one is also reading the raw data and then scaling them. So you don't want to read this twice because you will misassemble. So disable this and just use the scaled data. Um, and, and again, let's compile the code, load it to the board and back to debugging mode to read those data. All right, and now on debugging mode, I'll add the scaled data to watch memory now. So the gyro scaled and the accelerometer scaled, and I'll expand them. All right, now let's run the code. All right, there's a problem. Let me restart it. It always happened to me with this board. All right, uh, whenever this thing happened to you, uh, just unplug, unplug the board again. Um, I'm not really sure why that's a problem, but that's a very testing library anyway. So run it again. It's working. So what you're going to see is the units, the scale data are in milli G. So 1000 milli G is equal to 1 G. And now um, having the accelerometer completely facing the ground, you see that uh, the 1000 milli G is uh, on the Z axis. And now having the X axis or facing the ground, you see the 1000 is on the X axis. And similarly for the Y axis. Uh, but you see data might need to be calibrated and there is a calibration function there that I'll let you discover and um, calibrate for the accelerometer only. And then similarly the gyro, this is in degrees per second. So if I rotate it towards a Y axis, you see this value becoming high and then the X axis and then the Z axis. So I'll let you to experiment with it, but that's a very nice basic library to start off with if you use it in your basic testing projects. Um, right, so that's everything I want to show you at this video. This brings me to the end of my tutorial. Thank you for watching. Um, and as always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And for any of my business contacts, you can always get in touch with me through mutexembedded.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.